So today we're here at the Oklahoma State uh, Greenhouse Learning Center and the, uh, the brand new facility has wonderful indoor space for really cutting edge horticulture production systems, but we also have an outdoor learning space and that's where we're, we're, we're standing today. And in particular, we're standing on the, uh, the turf grass teaching space. And so we're standing on a, a Rio Bermuda grass lawn that uh, you can see here behind me has kind of a strange looking uh, pattern of greens and dark greens and light greens and, and it's all part of what we do in teaching but it makes for a good demonstration for, um, for you the homeowner or, 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 or the lawn care manager. So this time of year here in mid-November to early December we're really thinking about management of cool season lawns and it, it really is an ideal time to make one of our last fertilizer applications of the year. Whether or not you're going to use a, a complete fertilizer because you've got a soil test that suggests some deficiency or not, or a straight nitrogen fertilizer, either way we want to try to make that application at roughly a half a pound to one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. And in particular try to use a water soluble fertilizer that will get into the, into the soil quickly and then taken up by the plant before we get into the very cool months of the year. And so. What we can look at in this picture is a great demonstration of um, really what a brand new tall fescue lawn might look like that was recently seeded uh, as part of our class this, this past semester. And in the areas that are getting a, a nitrogen fertilizer, they're very dark green, much higher growth rate as compared to the areas that, that are not receiving any fertilizer. So we see that particularly in new lawns, really trying to make sure that first fall you're getting um, proper nutrition going into the, the winter. Alright, so we'll take a little closer look at some of these teaching plots we have. And so we have a series of bands and, and you can see here a nice dark green patch of Bermuda grass next to a very brown discolored patch. And that's an example of what a, a good late fertilizer program can do for a warm season grass. But even when we look at this perennial rye grass next to it, we really can see the difference with dense vigorous growth, dark green color compared to this thin sparse turf that's, that's really not as aesthetically pleasing. And, and it's really all about that fall fertilizer application, particularly uh, in mid-October, which is when this was applied, and then looking forward about mid-November to, to early December to make that follow-up application. So as part of teaching out here, we established three different cool season turf grasses. And what we did is we overseeded those directly into an existing Bermuda grass lawn space we had planted earlier in the year. And, and we did that largely to have a good demonstration of, of just the different establishment practices. Um, but certainly using something like a cool season grass into a Bermuda grass is not an uncommon practice for things like sports fields or in some cases home lawns. So if we come look at the first one here, we have a, a strip here of Kentucky bluegrass that's been seeded into our Bermuda grass space. And one thing you'll probably notice is there's not very much bluegrass in this spot. And so it, it shows that it's, you know, bluegrasses are a little bit more difficult to establish. And largely all we can see here is the Bermuda grass still sticking through. We compare that to the perennial rye grass next to it, perhaps one of our easiest to establish grasses. And we have really it's almost impossible to see the Bermuda grass at this point. Very dense um, per perennial ryegrass establishment. But ryegrass is one of our, our less, least hardy grasses and so we'll expect this to probably die out in the summer. We compare that then finally to our tall fescue where this is one you may be more familiar with in a home lawn, particularly in a shaded location, and relatively easy to establish and had a nice, nice uh, uh, establishment here for the lab. Um, and this is one we might be able to uh, hold on to and allow it persist through the summer heat. So in addition to seeing these three species, we can look at how fertilizer response impacts each of these grasses in, a, in this fairly newly established lawn. If we look at, for example, this section of the tall fescue, we have a non-fertilized space right here in this band that we applied no fertilizer to and it's very light colored, low density, 
even the grass isn't growing as vigorously. We compare it to this, this band here that received a fairly high rate of fertilizer in uh, about four weeks prior to this, to this shoot. And we see they had a very strong response, good color, good density. And so this time of year, um, roughly in that, that early to mid-October making application, and then again following up in mid-November to late December, really helps these cool season grasses get to their best before the cooler months of the year. So one of the things that we can take from this um, teaching facility is obviously number one good sound fertility program, but also when we look at um, selecting the turf grass species for your lawn, sometimes it might be worthwhile to include blends or mixtures of different grasses um, in order to get the advantage of maybe a very fast germinating grass with a grass that has a little more persistence or disease resistance or wear tolerance. And so you see quite often that a lot of commercial products are going to have a mixture of Kentucky bluegrass with tall fescue so that we can get it up and going and then it will persist and be a nice strong grass for us down the road. For more information you can look at the Oklahoma State uh, Extension fact sheets for information on grass selection as well as some information on lawn management and a lawn management calendar. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.